Hello and welcome to a This Week in Linux Distro Review. So today we're going to be taking a look at Jolly Cloud version 1.0. Now according to the jollycloud.com blog, it says here as of July 9th that they're going to start upgrading existing users. Well I just happened to get an email from them a couple of days ago saying that I had been chosen to go ahead and upgrade. Notice it's about two weeks later so they are rolling it out to, to the early adopters first and then they're going to be rolling it out to everybody else. But here's what Jolly Cloud 1 is going to look like. It's got a HTML5 launcher. That's extremely cool. I've been using it and didn't even realize it. It's got a new app center that has 700 free apps in it. It has a social stream where you can keep up with all of your streams in one location. It's got a universal file system that takes your existing local file system and also uses all of the online storage like Box.net, Dropbox, Dropio, and some other new services. And since it's a cloud-based OS, anywhere that you sign on to Jolly Cloud, you get all of the apps that you had installed on Jolly Cloud. And as we see here, they're rolling it out to existing members, founding members, people that have been out for a while, and they'll just let you know, usually by email, when you're able to upgrade. The other really cool thing I noticed on their blog, they've got touch support. That's awesome. All of these touch screens are now supported. They've got this little YouTube video that you can watch. I will have a link to that in the doobly-doo where you can check it out. And it basically shows them using their touch screen interface to control Jolly Cloud. We're going to take a look at the interface here in just a second. But before we do, I thought I'd give you a very quick look at the existing interface, the one that you'd see if you went ahead and installed Jolly Cloud. This basically looks a lot like the Ubuntu Netbook Remix from a couple of releases ago. That's because it's actually based on Ubuntu Jaunty, Ubuntu 9.04. So you're going to have a lot of the same look and feel, but with this existing 0.9.1 pre-release version, they've also got this Jolly Cloud dashboard where you can go in, look at their app directory, you can actually install applications directly from here, all these different categories. You've got your settings tab, which has all your personal information, including the computers you've installed it on, different services and updates, who you're following. But basically, if you have Jolly Cloud and you have been chosen to update, you can go into the updater, sign in, and it will actually say, you've been selected to upgrade, kind of like that. So, since I've already done this and I've already run the upgrade, let's go ahead and just take a look at it. All right, so here is Jolly Cloud version 1.0. And honestly, I've got to say the interface, it's a very gray interface, but that's kind of soothing to the eye. And it honestly has a lot of the same look and feel as some of the mobile OSs that we're seeing nowadays, like iOS 4 and Android and even Mego a little bit. But you've got all these applications that are installed. I've installed a lot of additional applications, nowhere near as many as are available, but they're one-click installs. They're very simple to get going. And it's a nice mesh of cloud and local installed apps. So for example, I've got Chromium and Firefox that are both installed locally. If I were to click on one of them, it bounces a little bit, kind of like the, uh, the OS X dock or the, any of the Linux-based docks takes you to the app that you're running. Now the other ones, like Twitter for example, will go ahead and take your default browser and take you to that website. So you've got that really seamless mix of local and cloud-based apps. Items like Skype will actually open up separately. You see here we've got this little interface for it that pops up over the top. And it's just very quick and easy and pretty much a seamless experience to go from one page to the other, to go from one app to another. You've even got an alt tab that you can use if you've got multiple things running. So if I were to open Vimeo and then click the home button and then run Wikipedia, you know, I can tab back and forth between two separate browser instances that are actually running. If on top of that I open up Audacity, it's going to ask me what language I want because I haven't run this yet. But see, now I've got three different apps running, little icons for each of them. I can click between them or click the home one. It's a very smooth interface, and they've put a load of work into making it look great. But let's just say that you're using Jolly Cloud and you want to add some new applications. Where would you go? The big green Add button in the upper left corner. So I hit Add. There we go. Here are the most relevant applications that are featured, the most recent ones that have been added. You've got Friends Picks, so if you have your friends set up, you can go and look at their picks. I don't have any friends on here yet. You can also go through the App Center to look at all of the apps that are available. I went through this the other day, there were 63 pages of applications. Very, very cool. And these are ranging from, like I said, local installed apps to cloud-based, meaning they would be just a link to the website. So the grand majority of these are going to be very, very quick to install. As an example, if I want to go ahead and install Pigeon, this is going to be a locally installed app. I click Add and it adds it. It's got this little synchronizing icon that tells me what it's actually doing. In addition, if I click Google Maps, this should be a cloud-based service. So just a very quick two clicks there. I've got these two apps installed and I'm done. If I click the Apps tab now, it'll take me back to all of my installed apps. You'll see I've got that second page full and now a third page that has Google Maps on it. Very quick and easy to get new applications and if I want to remove them, I click on it, go to Remove and it takes it away. You can also like the application or go view the details of it to see what all it's about and see the support information for it 
lots of great things and really just gives you a lot more full featured interface. And of course if I want to remove one, like I said, click on remove, it'll do this little removing thing. You don't even have to look at it, it just lets you know something's going on. Now let's say I had seven pages of applications and I'm on page one, I want to find something. I've got Google Voice installed, so if I type Google, it's going to search through my quick apps, it's going to search on Jolly Cloud to see if there's something out there, search on Google, but there we go, there's Google Voice. If I click on it, it opens up the web-based Google Voice account. Very quick, very easy. Now the last thing to probably mention is we've got a couple of extra tabs up here that I've not mentioned quite yet. If I click on this one, this is where I would have activities for friends, people that I'm following. I uh, haven't quite figured out how to how to add new followers to it, but I would assume that's either through Jolly Cloud or something they're going to add. Now I noticed if I type my name in here and just hit search and search on Jolly Cloud, it'll search for Jolly Cloud users named Jordan. You can search Facebook or Twitter for that name. If I go to Twitter, for example, here's some real-time results for the name Jordan. But if I go to Facebook, you can look for friends that are named Jordan. You can do Jolly Cloud users. A lot of great things there. And of course, if you wanted to look for apps like Sumo. I know that Sumo Paint is one of them, and I've got it installed, but if I search on Jolly Cloud, there we go, there's the application. Makes it so easy and so user-friendly, I really can't stress that enough. Now the third and fourth tabs, the third one of course is your local directories and your web directories. If I wanted to use Dropbox, for example, I would click Access Dropbox, put in my Dropbox information, and it would pull down the client for me, do all the work for me, and allow me to synchronize folders. And of course this last tab, I'm probably going to have to blur out some of it. You've got my information on here with the email address and stuff. Shows you how long you've been a member. It says here I'm a founding member of Jelly Cloud. Shows you your membership info like we see up here. The history of what you've done, when you've installed things and removed them. Your favorite applications, I don't have any. Different devices that you've installed it on. And then you can also get information on the device that you're using. So if you wanted to find out some legacy applications or information about what you're using, there you go. Basically, this is a very quick, very easy to use operating system. Would be wonderful on a tablet or on a netbook. Uh, I'm actually considering putting this on my netbook now. I'm really torn. There's so many great netbook-based distros coming out soon. One last thing to mention, like I said, this is based on a very old version of Ubuntu and they're really coming into their own, making it their own distro. So you really can't get access to the old interface unless you go through the terminal. Now, on that Jolly Cloud blog we looked at earlier, it mentioned if you hit Alt F1, it takes you to a terminal. So from there you can do all the traditional Ubuntu stuff like updating and installing software and just generally looking at, at what's on the system. If I do a uname-a, it's going to tell me the version of the kernel that's running. And actually the way that I found out it was jaunty based is I did a sudo nano etc apt sources.list and from within here you'll notice it says jaunty as all of the sources. So it's, it's a sort of an out-of-date version of, of Ubuntu with a lot of the newer stuff put onto it. it. You notice it had a very decently new kernel. 2.6.32 is still a little bit out-of-date, but not too bad. Alt F2, of course, is to run an application, just normal GNOME stuff. Alt F4 closes an application. I'm not running anything, but if I were, like Firefox, you can either click the X or Alt F4 will close it. I'm really looking forward to trying this out on my netbook, in addition to so many other distros, but if you want to try it out for yourself, go ahead and download the pre-final version, and whenever they are ready to let you try this 1.0, they'll send you an email, or it'll just pop up and notify you. I can't recommend this highly enough. It's got quite a few applications out there. It's not a desktop OS, so there's 700 applications available. Uh, there are more coming, of course, but download it, give it a shot, Try out 1.0 whenever you can because this is really impressive, really amazing. It really is just blowing my mind away. So now that I'm done, I'm going to shut it down and I'm going to thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.